Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my studio. Finally, I have been working very hard in the last two months in cleaning and organizing and purging my studio. And today, I get to show you the results. I can't really say my studio is new because if you've seen other organizing videos of mine, much will appear the same. What's different is how it functions. What I've done this time will help me work smarter, not harder. It's going to give me more time to create art and make videos. And that's a win in my books. Just a warning, this might end up being a bit of a long video. So grab your coffee or wine, get comfy. Let's do this. So every January, I typically do go through and organize my studio to some degree. As do, I think, many people, households, art studios, and the like. And I think that it's a great process to do. I think there's a lot of value in it, in refamiliarizing yourself with what you have and getting everything straightened up and setting yourself up for success as the year goes through. This year was no different, but it was a little bit more extreme because we had made the decision to get painters in here to paint our entire house, which meant everything in my studio needed to be moved out. And I decided if that was the case, I was going to come out the other end a whole lot more organized. And I was going to use this as an opportunity to purge, to look at every item in my studio and decide if it still has value to me. So in this process, I highly recommend touch everything. Go through every tool, product, piece of paper, and sort like with like. With every item, ask yourself, does this still reflect who I am as an artist or how I want to create? Now some of the things I moved in here six and a half years ago, and I may have been interested in bookbinding, for instance, but I'm not anymore. So I need to let go of those supplies. Clutter is nothing more than postponed decisions. So I was determined going into this to make those decisions. So with everything, I asked myself, does this still serve a purpose in my studio? If it was yes, it went into a pile. I'm sorting like with like. I want to see exactly how much I have of everything. I want everything that is similar to be together so I can store them properly. Now, if they were not representative of who I was right now or not something that I have any interest in using, then I needed to rehome it. I needed to donate it to a thrift store, gift it to an art friend, or throw it away. And I did just that. I had a donate box on the go, and as soon as the box was filled, I took a trip to the thrift store and unloaded it. Things left the room. I made those decisions, and I highly recommend that you do. Now, as I'm going through the stuff, bit by bit, I had a list of supplies that I wasn't ready to let go, but admittedly, I haven't really used it in the last year or two. So I made a list of those things. The other thing I made a list of was ideas I had when I rediscovered a rice paper or a focal image or a certain napkin. So I wrote down those ideas because I didn't want to stop the flow that I was in. Now, the list of things, the items, the supplies that I haven't been using, 
I decided to take it a step further. And I call it the use it or lose it plot supplies. And I made a printable, which I will make available to you as a free digital download at Ninny's Napkins. And I listed the items, my distress crayons, my colored Posca pens, my pit markers, what have you. These are things that I'm not really getting a lot of use out of. And I want to. And then I put on them numbers one to five. I printed them off and I made little cards like this. So now this is going to hang right in front of my workspace. I will look at this periodically and I will use these supplies. Every time I use a supply I'm going to cross off a number. So either I'm going to fall back in love with this product, find uses for it, or I'm going to decide that they simply have no value to me and I need to rehome them. So now that a lot of things have left the studio, I have piles of like products. I can see exactly how much I have and it's time to make some more decisions. I have to decide how many of these do I actually need. If it is a renewable resource, like egg cartons, bubble wrap, I'm going to keep less and I can file away the others. I know I can get an egg carton or a yogurt container or the like. With the exception of, I teach classes and so uh, in some cases I do want 10 egg cartons but I'm taking 10 egg cartons and I'm putting it in a tote and those things that I'm using to teach a class don't need to be in my creative space. They don't need square footage here. Once I've decided how much of that I actually need, I'm looking at all my storage containers, all my storage systems and deciding where best to store it. Now once I've given it a container, my hope is that I'm going to limit it to that container. So if it over time grows, I need to, that would be the signal that tells me that I need to do something, I need to purge and get rid of some stuff. Let's talk storage systems for a minute. I have about five or six storage systems that I use throughout my entire studio. They are used in multiple ways. So once I have a stash of, for instance, page protectors, I use this to store stencils, to store printables, to store napkins. I'm using the same thing in multiple ways. So I have a stash of this and I know I can continue to use it. I'm not having a different system for everything. So let's talk about what I do have in my storage systems because this I've tweaked over the years and I'm really happy with it. So I do have the page protectors. And like I said, I saw stencils napkins, printables, rice paper in here. And we'll see more of that when we do go step by step. The other thing that I have are these plastic envelopes. I have ordered this, I'm sure, five or six times. This one is 10 by 7. Love, love, love this size. This works for stamps. It holds six inch stencils. It holds little bits of collage papers. It's great to fill, to take on a create date. And I've even found that recently that it fits markers. There's also larger ones. These are 13 by nine and I've used these, although this size, I use this a whole lot more. 
I also use hanging files. I have a filing cabinet and this is a big part of my organization. Just an aside, all of these items work together as well. And you're going to see that when we go throughout the room. So the page protectors, the plastic envelopes, hanging files, binders, which the page protectors go into. I have four Ikea or Ikea-like carts, which I absolutely recommend, and a variety of Dollar Tree bins and baskets. Now the bins and baskets, again, are interchangeable. I have a lot of play with them. I can reorganize using the same bins and baskets in different places in my studio. Links to all the Creative Katie approved storage systems can be found in the description box below. That'll take you to the Amazon store and we'll, you'll be able to actually check it out and see if it's something that might work for you. Before we take a tour around the studio and go through each thing and I'll explain to you how I use it, why I use it, why I've made the decisions that I have. With mixed media and art journaling, I find that it's really necessary to have all the items pretty much at arm's reach. You need to see it to remember to use it. If you put it behind a door, you're more likely to ignore it. The more steps you have to take, the more things you have to open or move, quite honestly, I find I don't. And therefore, those supplies don't get used. So a lot of things in my studio, you'll note, are easily accessible. They are also easily put backable. So I'm saving time accessing them, finding them, as well as saving time putting them away. I've used this baby a lot. This is the Brother P-Touch. I have gone label crazy. And you're going to see just how easy this is going to make finding things and putting them back. So when you walk directly into my studio, you see this huge cabinet. Now I love this cabinet because it stores a lot. Don't love this cabinet because it's behind doors and it's a little bit difficult to access all the stuff in it. So basically I use this as more long-term storage. This is not where I put things that I access on a regular basis. So right now you can see I also use this to display my old art journals, new pages, some of my artwork. This is also visible from our how home, the main floor of our home. So I want it to be somewhat appealing as you walk by. This top shelf I love, and this holds all my binders that have napkins and or printables in them. In these binders, I have the napkins in page protectors. I have the printables in page protectors. So let's look at the inside of my napkin binder. I take a page protector and I put a piece of copy paper inside it. That allows me to put 
one or two napkins on one side and one or two on the other side. It gives some substance to the page protector and makes it less flimsy. I've organized the binder like with like. So I've got three binders that are flowers, but even within that, I've micro organized them. So poppies are with poppies. Roses are with roses. Sunflowers are with sunflowers. So if I need to, or I get another napkin that's another rose, I can easily go through, discard one, put one in, take one out that maybe I'm not using or I don't love, or I can just add another page protector in there and everything is still organized. It makes it easy. I do the same thing with my printables. So you can see I have three binders with blooms and flowers and I have different categories along the way. Now you can see the categories and maybe that's going to give you some ideas. But again, this is representative of how I do art and what themes I like to work with. So it might not resonate with you. Up top, I have some storage boxes and you'll see that I've labeled them. So now I don't have to go up there and look in each and every one to find it. These are items that I do not access often. Down below here, way in the back, I have my excess mediums. Then I have excess paint that I've purchased on sale. I recently took my Silhouette Cameo and found room for it in here, taking it off the tape, my second tabletop so that I can use that as a secondary creating space. Or more, more importantly, I can edit my videos there. Down below, I have a bin here of completed cards that I can send. These Sterilite containers containing multiple items. Again, they are labeled so I can easily see what's in there and grab the one I want. My gel printing stuff is all here. I've got big mark makers, smaller mark makers. My gel plates are there. All my watercolor papers as well. Another Sterilite container, I love those. They're great for taking on create dates or when you are, you want to create while you're on holidays. As you can see, this is fairly deep, but this way I can easily see what's inside and I can access it. Here is another major storage system, my filing cabinet. Now I got this at an auction. So check out thrift stores, check out garage sales for a filing cabinet. I highly recommend it with the hanging files. Now, right now, this one is situated and has been situated here for a long time. This kind of made a tight corner and I felt kind of boxed in, but I didn't think I had any options until I looked at it today. And I thought, what if I moved it? So there is where it was. So now I can actually open this door and I moved it over here. Now, I can still open the cabinet. Now remember, the things that are in that cabinet are not things that I use regularly. So I don't need extremely easy access. Also, you'll note that I have the filing cabinet on a platform that has casters on it. So I can easily roll this around should I want to access that cabinet. 
So if you don't have a filing cabinet, don't worry. Here's an alternative. I call it the big blue box storage system. And this is what I used before I got the filing cabinet. This I got from Staples, but I'll link one that I found on Amazon. I've seen them at Walmart. They're easily accessible. And just like the filing cabinet, you can hang the hanging files in there. So you can store everything that I have in the filing cabinet in maybe three or four of these bins, which are very easily stackable. These are also great for taking on trips when you want to create while you're traveling. Now let's open up the filing cabinet and see what I'm storing inside. See those colored folders? Those are my gel prints or collage papers, master boards, organized by color. I also used to have my coffee colored coffee filters in there, but recently I moved it to my Pendaflex hanging file system. We'll see if that works any better, or will they find their way back into these folders so it's all in one place. Sometimes you just have to try it out and see what works best. In here, I also have focal images. We've got my magazine pictures. I've got some scrapbook papers, some tear resistant papers, and these plastic folders. Remember the plastic folders that I showed you? These were the bigger ones. Now I've labeled them on top. Look how easy it is to see and grab any of them now. And likewise, when I'm done with the dragonfly templates or printables or whatever is in that plastic envelope, I can just grab that envelope out and easily put it back. Before we move on, let's just look at how I organize the hanging file for my gel prints and collage papers. I've got full size papers just there. Then in a smaller folder, can't think of the name of it, I have half size or smaller ones. Then in some of the folders, I have the little bits, I guess I've used them up here, in these plastic envelopes, the seven by 10 ones, that will be in here. I can use the page protectors or the plastic envelopes to micro organize things in my filing cabinet. I have all these magazine pictures. My plan is to organize them by theme and put them in the page protectors or the envelopes, and then they all go in the one hanging file. So you see how my storage systems work together. Now I put the things that I access the most on the top shelf of my filing cabinet. The things that I don't access as often go down below. They're also heavier. And again, most of this is collage paper. And you can see that I got out my P-Touch. Let's turn this this way. And I labeled everything. We've got coffee filters, white, white napkin pies, tissue paper, stamp tissue paper, modeling paste tissue paper, pattern paper, music paper, dictionary paper, stencil materials, sticker paper, palette paper. Uh, here's also my stash of page protectors, sticker sheets, and my seven by 10 plastic envelopes. It's all here and easily accessible. So walking into my room, we have the filing cabinet and the big storage cabinet. There's my main workstation. So right off to the right-hand side, I have 
supplies that I access every project. On this four tier Ikea like cart, I have all my acrylic paints on the top. I have them in this storage caddy that I got at Michael's. Makes it easy to access and grab. On the second tier, I have all my mediums, gesso, modeling pastes of different kinds, gel medium. I have my water spray bottle hanging on and my Murphy's oil soap mixture in a spray bottle. Then hanging on a Dollar Tree basket are all my makeup sponge and blending foams and microfiber cloths that I use. Do you see that towel bar? That is an over the cabinet towel bar from Dollar Tree and you can open it up. It might be a little stiff to start off with and then you can put it a basket through there and hang it in multiple places in your studio. They hang on the filing cabinet my cabinet doors, on the carts, as well as on my hanging shelf. Down at the very bottom, I have stamps, some extra mediums, my stamping platform, and my mini Tim Holtz paper cutter. Spinning it around, I have a bin from the Dollar Tree with mark makers. And these are all the caps that I can use mark making on my tool. Then I have more color mediums, my color sparks, stencil butters, and starburst sprays. And again, you can see that they're labeled. Now, on the cart, behind the cart, I have a work in progress hanging file system. And again, I'm repurposing this. This has these zippered project pouches. I'm using them, they're ongoing, they're mixed media kits that I am in the process of developing. So anytime I have an idea, I can just pull out this one, put in the idea or the printable, something that's going to go with it, and it's all in one place. This is also where I keep blank sheets, my mixed media paper that I've taken off the coil. And we've got some scrapbook papers here at the back. This is excess paint. And you'll notice these several of these bins are empty or near empty. That's because of the purge. So again, these things outside of what's on the top, I'm not accessing often at this time. You may have noticed that all my bins are color coordinated. I lucked out. I have picked up some of these over time and this year everything finally coordinates and works together and I love it. I find it easy on the eyes as you go around the room as opposed to having a hodgepodge but that's just me. So you'll see again, the same bins that I have on my Ikea or Ikea-like carts, I've used in, on my workspace. The white melamine system is shoe storage from Walmart. Again, something that I have and I've placed it on my desk, my tabletop, and it allows me to put a lot of products right in front of where I create. Remember those use it or lose it? There are the cards 
and I've moved some of those items to right in front of me so that I do try to use them and see, am I going to love them or list them? Up here, I have all my markers, the stress crayons, the jelly roll pens, my needle color twos. These are all things that I am not have not been using a lot. Here I have my two bins. These are my sentiments. And again, these have pockets down below that you could label them, but I found that you didn't see them. I'd have to pull them out in order to see which sentiment pack this was. Now they're right across the top and I can very easily find them. So when I print out a page from my sentiment packs and I might use one sentiment or two of them, the excess go in here. And then when I'm looking for a sentiment and I want a garden theme or courage theme, I just go to these plastic pouches and find a sentiment that's going to work. I told you I love those plastic pouches. You'll notice that my tabletop is all glass. Initially, I bought the Tim Holtz glass mat and I loved it, but I got this cut to size, went to a glass store and got it cut to size. It's not tempered glass because it's solid underneath and I love it. It gives me one smooth top. It's easy to take all the mediums off of. The only problem with it is it shows and reflects light so for filming videos, it's not the best. I have a brush caddy from the Dollar Tree and another Dollar Tree bin that I have my masking tape that I mask off the tops of my pages. And these Sterilite containers that hold my white and black markers, X-Acto knife, stylus, charcoal, and Stabilo and my heat tools. Moving around, we have my laser color printer. On top, I have two Dollar Tree bins, one for papers, and a lot of these are papers that have printing on one side that I'm, I use, and to be filed. Stuff that I've used goes in there, and then when the bin gets full, I have to deal with it. There's where I will edit videos. And you'll notice I have my computer sitting on top of a Dollar Tree bin. Up here, in order to get this work in progress, these are ideas. Again, I have it sitting on another Dollar Tree bin. So you can see how I'm using those bins in multiple ways and it's all interchangeable. This was a metal caddy that I bought and I decoupaged it and did some mixed media treatment on it in the colors of my studio, as I did with my fluid medium and gessos. Don't they look cute? And so easy to do. These are Dollar Tree bins that are stackable. And I have an assortment of ongoing collage papers. I've got focal images, assorted ephemera, collage papers. Then I have bits of napkin and tissue, words. These are leftover sentiments that don't fit any of the sentiment packs or didn't get properly filed and some DIY stamps. Over here, we have a hanging file. This one I got from Ikea 
but I'm so excited. My husband just learned how to make one of these. He'll be making a few more and those will be going over there. After the painters came and filled all the holes, I want to minimize how many holes I put in the wall. And this art shelf or floating shelf allows me to constantly change what I'm displaying in regardless of the size. These are bins from Dollar Tree that I got this year. And I've got the over the cabinet holders. Here I have card making. Every so often I'm making cards. So everything I need to make cards is right there. Blank journals, tags, and cards. Napkins. Often when I'm working on a project, I might pull several napkins. This is where they're going to go until they get back into the binders. Remember the list I made of pages and projects that I wanted to do that I was inspired as I was organizing? Well, I did a designer clipboard and I can put post-it notes on it with those ideas. It's gonna hang right there. So here we have two Ikea carts. And basically this is my stamping and stenciling center. Once again, the P-Touch with the labels right across the top. I want the dot stamp, I can find it. The script stamp, it's easy to find. Then I know which envelope it goes back in if I've taken one of them. The stamps that I use a lot are on top. The ones that I use less are down below. I also have an assortment of wooden stamps that I've picked up at garage sales, at the thrift store, dollar store. They're right handy. Then I have my wooden alphabet stamps. Down below I have my baby wipes and there's my Inktense blocks and Inktense pencils and cling wrap. A little more storage. These are DIY journals that I've made. And another Sterilite container. Again, this one's partially empty. Right now at the top, sticker paper washi tape. Over here, I have my six inch and other stencils. The initials represent the designers, which because I am a brand ambassador for the Crafters Workshop, I need to keep track of that. My sentiment binder, this has a printout of all the sentiments so I can easily flip through it. And then I know, oh, that's the one I want. So I can either take this out and print it or go to the plastic pouch and maybe it's already there in a size that will work for me. I also have rice paper, which I put in, this is basically page protectors and I put it two sides. How easy is this to flip through and find the one that you like. You'll notice that they go past the top, but because I'm storing them on the top of the Ikea cart, that's not a problem. Down below, I have my 12 inch stencils. I've got two over here in a magazine rack that I've repurposed and I've got two over there. Again with the designers on the outside. I typically know that who the designer is for the stencil I'm looking at 
And so now all I have to do is grab the one. I just discovered something and I want to share that with you. These magic erasers take acrylic paint off of blinds, these plastic blinds. I have scrubbed and tried to clean them on multiple occasions. And today I tried the magic eraser and it's a miracle. It's clean. So it's great at removing acrylic paint from walls, from blinds, tabletops. Now, I'll be honest, there's been a couple weeks here where basically my studio was ready to go. But I wanted to create in it. I wanted to test out how I have rearranged things and labeled things to see how it works. And I'm really happy with it. It is saving me time and energy. So as I walk through, once again, in my studio, which I love, I just want to thank you for taking this tour with me. I hope I've given you something to think about given you some ideas and maybe made the process of organizing your studio a little bit easier. If you like one of the ideas or have an idea to share, put it in the comment section below.